find the area of the inner loop of this curve, we are going to need to know some bounds. Let's go ahead and just do a rough sketch quickly so we see what's going on here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this actually is uh, something that looks kind of like this. And we've got, whoops, that's really bad. <laughs> uh, comes around and then does a little inner loop and then back around like that. And so we're looking at this, uh, we're looking for this area here. And notice that starts and ends when r is equal to 0. So we're going to set r equal to 0. Um, so 1 minus 2 sine theta, we want to find out when that equals 0. So that's when sine of theta is equal to 1 half. And uh, that happens, of course, in lots of different places. And it happens at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Um, of course, we could go further. Um, <clears throat> we could go to uh, uh, 13 pi over 6, right, et cetera, et cetera. So what we need to do is we need to find um, the, uh, the bounds that will give us the inner loop and not actually the outer loop. Right? We don't want to start integrating when the inner loop has ended and then end it when the inner loop begins again. Um, and so the way we're going to do this is we're just going to pick a random value of r um, between uh, on two different intervals, right? So adjacent intervals are going to be what we're looking at. So we're going to look from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. We're going to choose pi over uh, 2 and plug it into here. And when we do that, we get r equals sine of pi over 2 is 1, so we get a negative 1. And that's great because when r is negative, that's when we end up with our inner loop. So that's actually the interval that we need. So now we're going to be integrating from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Um, and uh, then we have 1 half, and it's r squared. So 1 minus 2 sine theta squared. And that's, that's the formula for the area enclosed by a polar curve. So now we need to actually square that out and integrate. So we've got 1 half. 1 minus 4 sine of theta plus uh, 4 sine squared of theta, d theta. Um, I'm going to pull the 1 half out. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to be using the half angle identity to integrate the sine squared. <clears throat> so remember, sine squared is 1 half um, of 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. So the 1 half and the 4 become a 2. So we have 2, and then it's 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. So let's just multiply that 2 through. So it's 2 minus 2 cosine of 2 theta. <clears throat> and um, let's go ahead and just simplify one more time before integrating. We've got 1 plus 2, that's 3. So 3 minus 4 sine theta minus 2 cosine of 2 theta. All right, well, now we can go ahead and integrate. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we get a 3 theta, and then plus 4 cosine theta, since the derivative of cosine is a negative sign. And then here minus, this is just going to end up being cosine of 2 theta, or sorry, sine of 2 theta. And we're evaluating from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. All right, so 3 times 5 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 2 plus 4 times the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. Uh, sine of, this is, that's going to be 5 pi over 3, and sine of 5 pi over 3 is uh, negative root 3 over 2. And then minus, plugging in pi over 6, we get 3 times that, that's pi over 2. And then plus uh, 4 times cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. And then minus uh, sine of 2 pi over 6, that's pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. All right, so uh, let's see, we've got 5 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. That's 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. 
this here is negative 2 root 3. Um, and that's, and again, another negative 2 root 3, so that's minus 4 root 3. Here we have plus root 3 over 2, plus another, another root 3 over 2, so that's plus a root 3. And so we have 1 half 2 pi minus, now just 3 root 3. And uh, let's go ahead and bring that 1 half in. We get pi minus 3 uh, root 3 over 2. And that is the area of our inner loop.